One of my favorite things about camera sliders is the ability to shoot time-lapse video. So today we're gonna to cover how to do that using a 3D printer as our subject. So we're gonna build a cool little object and shoot a nice smooth take across as it builds. It's about a four and a half hour build and we're gonna condense it down into a cool little video. So we're gonna show you how to do that with the newer app and uh, we'll cover the whole thing. So we're glad you're here. This is the Newer Academy. All right, so I'm really excited about this shoot. I wanna talk about our gear really quickly, and then we'll start talking about our camera and our shot. So you can see front and center, I've got my 3D printer, and I'm lighting it with three of my RGB 1200 panel lights. Uh, this one here is just set to a daylight balance, so is my camera. And then I've got two lights set to the color mode, and I'm just hitting it with like a nice blue light. Whenever I'm shooting tech and stuff, I kind of like hitting it sometimes with a blue accent. I think it kind of makes it look, you know, spacey and cool. Uh, down here, we have our ER180 camera slider. And you can see I've got it mounted to my newer tripod. And on the right and the left, I've got support arms connecting it uh, to the tripod. And that's just gonna really brace it. If you're gonna shoot with a camera slider mounted to a tripod, I really recommend those support arms. They keep everything nice and stable. So that's it for our gear. Let's, uh, let's move into our camera. Let's talk about our shot. All right, so we're gonna get our camera and our slider all ready to go for our shot. The first thing I wanna talk about real quick though is running power to this. If we're just running from batteries and we're gonna be running this for over four hours, we run the chance of both of those, you know, not making it to the end. So the solution that is really easy and pretty cheap is USB power supplies. These guys uh, can hold charges and you can actually use them to trickle charge the batteries and keep this going well beyond the life of the battery. Uh, you'll see I've got a little Velcro on this. I've also got uh, here. And the reason I've got that is because this is gonna be moving over the course of the four hours for our exposure. So I like to have it uh, just kind of stuck there a little bit so that uh, you know I'm not worried about them falling off. Uh, I'll just get these guys plugged in to the devices and then uh, we'll power on our slider. And remember when we power the slider on, the first thing it's going to do is orient itself to the left of the track. And there it goes. Now we'll talk really quick about a couple of the functions of our slider. The default setting for these sliders is for this central line to be straight, which creates that nice smooth dolly pan shot what we want for this isn't going to be the dolly pan, we actually wanna use our dolly tracking shot. So the easy way to do that, and we've got this covered in our advanced slider video, is I'm just gonna loosen up my toggles here, and I'm going to be moving this to try to find our good frame for us to start on. And I think right about there. All right, so now that we've got our slider adjusted into the tracking dolly shot that we like, we've got our power supply running, now we can start to look at some of our shots and see if everything is kind of shaping up the way we want. So I'm gonna flip on my newer app and I'm just gonna go into the manual mode right now. I'm gonna leave my power at 100% and I'm just gonna go ahead and watch what happens as we run through the course that we've set here. So what we're doing right now is we're watching our shot in real time, real speed. So when we set this up to do our time lapse, we know exactly what our shot's going to look like as our time lapse is taking place. So right now I'm using the printed end that I've already got from a test print to you know, frame everything up and see if I like my shot. Once we've got everything set, we like our shot, we're going to take that out, start our time lapse, and then we'll start our printer but we wanna see what that shot looks like to start with. And I really love the way that that looks. I think that that has this really nice pan across there. We're gonna see it build up. I think that's exactly what we want. One thing I wanna talk about really quickly is your camera settings when you're setting something like this up. It's best to think of a time-lapse exposure as one shot and not a series of little shots. And what I mean by that is I would use all manual settings in your camera when you're shooting a time-lapse. 
you don't want auto aperture, auto ISO, auto shutter speed, uh, auto focus, any of those things that might show slight variation between exposures, you don't want your final shot. If your exposure is, uh, is, is finding a different thing in its meter, then all of a sudden you might see these little blooms of light as your time lapse runs. The same is true with focus. If you're relying on your camera's autofocus, it might be finding a different point at one of your shots and you might see some breathing in the final shot. So I like this as a starting point. I think we're ready to go. So the next thing we'll do is talk about our time-lapse settings in our app. Okay, we are ready to shoot. So a couple last minute details I wanna talk about. The first one is I've attached my sync cable from my slider into my camera. So that's gonna you know, send the data to trigger the shutter. And I've also wrangled my cables with a couple of twist ties. Uh, it's always a smart idea to keep cables nice and close to your camera, uh, especially in a rig like this. When you have some of these little toggles and stuff, you wouldn't want the cables snagging on that and dropping your batteries on the floor. So keep your cables wrangled. I've also taken out my test print because we're ready to do the real thing. And we're gonna do that using our app. So I've been in manual mode. I'm gonna flip over to my time-lapse mode. And inside of this, I have a few settings from the top down. Not a lot, it's pretty darn simple, which I love. Uh, the first one is it's point A, B settings. So when you're looking at the slider, this is A, this is B. I really liked the look of our first shot at point A, where we had that blue light hitting the side of our printed N. So I kind of want that to be my final shot. So instead of making our slide run go from A to B, we're gonna go from B to A. So I just need to switch that over in my app. The next thing it's gonna ask you is the duration of your film. Uh, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second. I'm going with 30 frames a second, which is you know, kind of a video standard. This is just gonna calculate the number of frames it's gonna be shooting. Uh, the shutter speed is the next thing. I've got it set at cam, so that's for camera. If you're curious, I'm shooting at a hundredth of a second at f8 and I'm at 1600 ISO on my camera. The last setting on the camera is the frame by frame duration. So this is how much time is elapsing between frames. Uh, right now it's at 10 seconds, but if I look down at the bottom where it says shooting time, it's two and a half hours. I know from the file that this is gonna take around four hours, a little bit over to print. So two and a half is not gonna cut it. So I need to change that. So I need to go in there and I need to move that number up until I see my shooting time hit where I want it to be. So if I go up to 15, I'm at three hours and 45 minutes. If I go to 18, four and a half hours. So four and a half hours, I think, is gonna be a great amount of time for this. Our print might finish a little ahead of that, but that actually works out great because that means the last little bit of our movement will have a completed print. So we just get to see the depth of it there at the end, which I think will work out really nice. So our app is ready, our camera's ready, we've got our power supplies, we've got our lights, everything's ready to go. We're gonna send our file to the printer and we're gonna get started. All right, there it is, our little letter N. I really love how that turned out. You saw how simple it was, the setup was easy, the equipment's pretty minimal, and we got a really cool result. So I hope you guys go out and try this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.